All right. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully, everybody as well. Yes, I like to hear good mornings back. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a board of directors meeting. Uh, Thursday, June 22nd, uh, 2023. Uh, meeting was scheduled for 10 a.m. It's approximately uh, 10 19. So, with that, uh, let's call to order the meeting. Madam uh, Clerk, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance first. Turn. Pledge of Allegiance. United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Vice Chairman, could you lead us in prayer today? Please stand and bow your heads. Lord, thank you for this day that you have brought this group together to do the people's business not out of any kind of personal situation, but because we're trying to do what's best for the community. Bless our staff, bless the consultants and the others who help us accomplish our task on a daily basis. Bless those five souls who, Lord, I want you to look over them and continue to have hope that they will be found and recover it. These and other blessings we ask in your son, in your name. Amen. Amen. Good Welcome, morning. Board Member Cueto. Present. Board Member Monestine. Here. Board Member Spifano. Here. Treasurer Weinberg. Here. Vice Chair Here. Moss. Here. Chairman Diaz. Here. Thank you, ma'am. All right, uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, hang on for a second. Uh, did, um, we discussed oh, that you wanted to move uh, yes. an item. Yes, let's move my uh, report forward if you want. I think it's item eight. Yeah, one G, I think it would be appropriate. Your chair comments will be moved to one G. Thank you. At this time, I want to have a brief discussion on an item the, or the, something that's occurring uh, again. Um, and that is, you want to approve the agenda? I don't want to mess up your flow, but oh, yeah, man, you had me going. <laughs> no, I, and then I you know. stopped me. I'm very, well, get very together sorry. there, Carlos. You, you don't, you don't know how <laughs> bad I, I feel right now. <laughs> Could I have an approval of the agenda moving my item forward? <laughs> Thank you. Second. So th that was all in favor, everybody. Let's go. Aye. All right. Now with that, I want to take a minute to discuss in the chairman's uh, discussion. You know, we worked hard in this agency for a couple of years and people before us have worked extremely hard to make sure this agency continues on. Commissioner, the vice uh, chairman Ma said in his prayer about the people that work in this agency that really work hard to make sure that the best is done every day. And they do. And MDX has done an incredible job and will continue to do an incredible job. But we are obligated to protect this agency from anybody that is trying to take it away in any way, shape, or form. And this is something that has happened and we have worked hard and done away and used legal methods to do that protection of this agency. We have fiduciary duties to the bondholders that have approximately, I think it's 1.6 billion, how much is it? Four One? billion, 1.4 billion. 1.4. 1. 1.4, well, it was a little bit over. <laughs> 1.4 billion dollars in bonds. We have the citizens of Miami-Dade County that the uh, expressways that are built and, and improved and done are the tools that they pay because they're happy to make sure that they have the right highways and stuff and that 
they're able to transit to a place in a faster mode and, and be able to be there for their families a lot earlier. All this is done for the hard work that's been done. I want to make sure, and I think my colleagues stand with me together on this, that we have to protect this entity. We have to protect it for what it stands for, for what it has done, and for what it should and would continue to do. So with that, Mr. Counselor, I want to ask you the direction and what we need to do to continue that protection of this agency. Well, just let me <clears throat> echo what you said. We have fiduciary responsibility. You, as the chairman, board members, and the executive director, and, and I think the CFO also has a fiduciary responsibility to protect the bondholders. Um, in that light, I've asked uh, our head, head outside counsel, Gene Stearns, to come and give you a litigation update. Um, because I think we're at a precarious position right now. And uh, I kind of think that he can give you an overview of what we're going to do and what we have planned to do. You gave us the mandate a long time ago. You've re re echoed it, mm -hmm. and we've continued to do it. Um, it's nice that, and I, I really appreciate that, that you're going to give us the floor uh, for, I don't know how long. Gene says 10 minutes, but... That's Gene, 10 minutes, that's half hour of the rest of us. Not only kidding you. But I, I have called Gene Stearns up, and uh, he will give you an update of the current situation and what our plans are. Mr. Stearns. Thank you, Carlos, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. Is that better? Yes, sir. Um, it is apparently on. Um, let, let me just give us a little bit of an historical uh, overview. Uh, Dade County in 1956 was granted unique powers by the Florida voters with a constitutional amendment that created something that's extraordinary, which is called home rule. And under our home rule charter, which was adopted in 1957, we have the most sweeping home rule powers uh, of any county in the state of Florida. But let's not lose perspective of what it means. Dade County has a larger population than 15 states in the United States of America. Those 15 states have 30% of the United States Senate. We have more land area than five states. Those five states have 10 United States senators. Our power is not in the federal government. Our power is local. And our power is created by the Florida Constitution. Our con constitutional powers as a county are such that our county government has the absolute legal authority to abolish any agency created by the state of Florida that has its sole function to be local government in Dade County. That legal principle has been enforced uniformly since 1957. It's been attacked over and over and over and over again, and generations of Dade Countyans have stood at the door and said, no, you're not going to attack home rule power in Miami-Dade County. And so what has happened in this context is unequivocally an attack on home rule. And let's go through how the legislature did it. And let's be honest, by the way. They're not attacking MDX because the MDX has done anything wrong. They're attacking MDX because they want it, not because they're critical of it, but because they want control of it. They want to move control of our local agency to Tallahassee. They, in this bill that they passed originally, for example, a legislative committee would approve all the bond issues that are conducted to fund expressways, east-west expressways, in only Miami-Dade County. Now, when the law was originally passed, you authorized us to bring a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the original act. And we convinced a state judge in Tallahassee to declare the act unconstitutional. The state appealed that to the First District Court of Appeals, and they didn't address the issue of constitutionality, but concluded that the MDX had no legal standing to complain about the unlawful act that had been taken puzzling outcome, but nonetheless, that's what the First District Court of Appeal did. We took an appeal of that decision to the Florida Supreme Court, 
And while that appeal was pending, the Day County Commission adopted a resolution abolishing GMX uh, and reinstating MDX. So we withdrew our appeal. And then when the state proceeded to say that, that the county was wrong and they were right, on your behalf, we filed a lawsuit in the Circuit Court of Miami-Dade County to declare uh, the ownership of all of the assets of MDX to quiet title to MDX's assets. And a Circuit Court judge in Miami-Dade County entered a final judgment finding in our favor. That order remains pending. They appealed that to the Third District Court of Appeals. And then while the appeal was pending, and it probably speaks as to what they believe as to the outcome of that, and I should point out, by the way, that the county government joined us in both the litigation and in the appellate briefs that are still pending. While that was pending, the legislature attempted to do something to say this really isn't a local bill. And they adopted a, an amended statute that is essentially the same, except they changed the composition of GMX's board. And then what they did now was to suggest in this act that there's a dirt road on federal land in Monroe County that is now part of the MDX jurisdiction, which is, of course, everyone knows is a sham. You can't build it. There's a road that would go to nowhere. It isn't an expressway. It has nothing to do with the business of MDX, but it is a sham to, see, to create an impression that this bill involves two counties, and therefore they say it's no longer a local bill. Now, it, it, by the way, the law is quite clear that you can't do indirectly what the law prohibits you from doing directly, and that's precisely what they've done. Now, what the current problem is, is that what the county, that the state is pretending to do now is to go to the TPO and have the TPO appoint two members of this new GMX board, and if that is, a, is accomplished, then they would have a quorum on a, on a GMX board at which point they plan to move in here and take over your business. That's what's going on here. Now, I spent 10, 12 years of my life going around Day County helping communities on a pro bono basis create new villages and towns, Aventura, Pinecrest, Sunny Isles, Miami. You know, I went 12 years traveling all over this county talking about the benefit of government close to the people. And those community governments have been enormously successful. But the county government plays a critical role on major urban matters, transportation, public health, uh, uh, you know, you name the list, airports, seaports, and expressways. This agency acquired uh, the rights from the county government to create its existence. It put millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into this system, provided a system that's safe, efficient, and you created a business model here which isn't bureaucratic. You have a relatively small staff for the staggering job you've undertaken. You have figured out how to bid jobs, contract jobs, create opportunities for people in this community to engage in meaningful work and have done it honestly, efficiently, competently. And the notion that a state government would take it away from you simply solely because they want it. There's no reason to take it away. And so other countries, I've been told this morning by a prominent gentlemen in the audience, that you go, other countries are turning how to, how to figure out how to make things and build things and make things work. We spend time on petty little arguments and destroy the good things that are working. No one should reasonably challenge what MDX is doing. This petty political war is nonsense, and it's extraordinarily wasteful for, the, for both the state and the people of Miami-Dade County. Now, our... Our strategy, if you approve it, is to carry on the mission that we were charged with last time we met, which is we believe we need to file another lawsuit, only there'll be a twist. Uh, we will join a bondholder uh, in that litigation because you do have $1.4 billion of bonds outstanding. You committed, those bonds are not to, to be played games with. Commitments were undertaking. There's an agreement that this agency has with the State Department of Transportation that is supposed to be in perpetuity. And as the judge in this case said, in perpetuity means in perpetuity. And so this in run on it is, in our view, totally illegal and improper. So it, with your permission, we will file the lawsuit today and join a bondholder in it. So I ask for that permission. I also ask for the opportunity to go speak to the TPO this afternoon at 2 o'clock 
and urge them not to make the appointments. Don't create a crisis. Let the courts work this out. Don't have a circumstance where another government comes in here and says, we're taking over. This is not a country that should be run in that kind of fashion. The matter should be addressed legally and properly. And frankly, every public officer who takes office in the state of Florida swears an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the state of Florida. And the Constitution of the state of Florida gives Dade County home rule power. And frankly, generations of people have made sure we haven't lost it. And this isn't the time to lose it now. So with your permission, we will proceed in that fashion. Mr. Stern, I've known you for over 30 years, and you never cease to amaze me. Thank you for being part of this team. Thank you for doing everything you've done for this agency and continue to do so. So my colleagues, I think we're very clear on something that we have uh, done before. I didn't think we need to give another direction because we already have done it for whatever it took. And, but we'll do it again, and we'll refresh it. So do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, have the opportunity to make a motion uh, that we continue on the course uh, that's been out, uh, been laid out by Mr. Stern and uh, uh, talked about by our attorneys um, uh, moving forward. Motion taken, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? None, for the record. Mr. Stern, thank you. Uh, continue on the way you have. And to, today, please, at the TPO, make sure that we're very clearly heard. You will be heard, and before 2 o'clock, they will have the complaint uh, in front of them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Counsel? You want, me to, follow, say you want me to that? follow that up? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Attorney, uh, you know, uh, I need you to help guide me uh, on uh, this next um, recommendation that I'm going to make. And because of what we just heard and what we have been going through, meaning Miami-Dade Expressway Authority, um, I believe that there is a need to have some stability going Amen. forward. Amen. Okay. And as a result of that, what I'm going to recommend, and if you would allow me, um, and I hope that you would accept, uh, to make a motion uh, on item uh, number 3C, uh, the election of authority officers. And I'd like to make a motion to um, and Mr. Attorney, make sure that I'm doing it properly now. Sure. To defer um, this, uh, taking this vote until such time as we have more clarity and, and, and st stability, if you will, uh, in reference to the ongoing litigation and other things that we're facing at this particular point in time. I think stability is very, very important uh, during this period of time. And so that is a motion that I would like to put forward, you know, to. Yeah, it's the only thing forward. that I would add to his motion is that we waive the requirement. And uh, I think it's uh, section 3.9 where they say we have to have an election in June. But in light of the situation, I think it's appropriate. So the motion would be waive the requirement to have the election in June and come back when the board deems it appropriate to have the elections. Now, I'm not, that's your decision, but that's what that would be the motion. That, that, that is the motion. And, and again, um, Mr. Chair, I just believe that we need to have continued stability until we can work through this process and I feel that we're going to be successful, um, but we need to continue uh, to ensure that we've got a, uh, our direction uh, continues to be the same. Motion taken. Is it a member Smith Fano? If I may just clarify, because I would like to second the motion, but I want to be sure that I understand it. We're waiving the ability to do our election in June, to defer to date to be determined. Correct. By the board. By your by the board. And I would like the honor of second. 
Oh boy. I have a motion. I have a second. Anybody? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. That's a great All move, right. Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Council, you want to start with your agenda? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we, we uh, declaration of voting com conflicts. Nope. Does anybody on this board have any conflicts anybody with any items on the agenda? None. Conflict. Uh, Madam Clerk, please record no conflicts on the board. <laughs> oh, citizens' comments? Do we have any cards? No cards. Okay. Okay. Or so nobody's rushing up and nobody's running, right? Anybody? Okay. No. Go. Okay, so so it would be 2A, the public hearing item, where we can hear comments on the public hearing item, is the approval of the MDX fiscal year 2024 annual budget and five year work program for fiscal years 2024 to 2028. Do I have a motion on this? Second. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Next item. Okay. Uh, well, it's open to the public. Does anybody have anything on this? No. I didn't see anybody stand up or anything, so. All right. Do you want a presentation on that? I'm sorry? Do you want a presentation on that? Yeah. Do you need one? That, but I that was taking a motion and a second. Let's get the presentation. Okay. Listen, Ma Marie, Listen you guys Marie threw me off. Okay, so I'm a little thrown off. Very all right? hard. Give me a little break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and just for the record, this awesome presentation is my treasurer's report. Right, Marie? <laughs> Smart lady. No, I, I do, I do want to commend our entire accounting team and Marie. They've worked very, very hard in putting together what and you've all reviewed show. to be quite a, a, a budget item. So Thank take you. it away, Marie. Make me look good. <laughs> she always does. Thank you, everybody. She? Good morning. Um, good morning, this, ma this is the fiscal year 24 annual budget as well as the five year capital program, fiscal 24 28. Um, our forecasted revenues for fiscal year 24 is $261 million. That's an increase of 10%. Um, our toll revenue is $237 million forecasted for next year which is offset by a $10 million allowance, and that allowance could be used for a customer discount program, um, possibly later during the year, um, as well as any impacts to the hurricane. Um, toll revenue is, uh, reflects no toll rate adjustments or CPI adjustments, so rates are kept the same that they've been in the last couple of years. We have an eight, almost an 8% increase on toll revenue, and that's primarily due to a slight increase of traffic, and we have a better performance on collections, and we made some operational improvements um, in the toll operations section, so our collections have been better, and as well as the efficiencies of the lane. Um, it should be noted also that 72% of our toll revenue comes from our SunPass customers or transponders. Um, our fee revenue is $13 million, and that's pretty much flat. Um, that is generated by a toll bay plate customers. Investment um, and other income is about $10 million. That's a $6 million increase. And as everybody knows, we're in a high interest rate environment, and that's why there's an increase in that, that area. The toll revenue by expressway, as you can see, 61% comes from the Dolphin Expressway, followed by Don Shula Airport, Gratney and Snapper Creek in that order. We have 1.5 average daily transactions. We have uh, 2 million average weekly drivers on our expressway that, that touch our five expressways. And the average daily toll rate is 63 cents. On the expenditure side, the major expenses on the operating side, we have our traffic management center that obviously monitors our traffic, monitors the flow of traffic, monitor monitors safety concerns. We have the toll operations uh, department. They oversee the insurance of uh, our, our, our revenue from the back office as well as on the roadway on the lane side. We have our service patrol, which is a benefit to our customers, seven days a week, 24 hours. Um, if someone breaks down, uh, we you know change a tire. We provide gas so they can get to a safety spot. Um, no charge to the customer. We have our overall general management. We have two general consultants that have been very critical in assisting us. We have you know, 38 positions, 
and we're very lean staff. And we have other professional services, such as our financial advisors, our traffic and revenue, our legal team. Um, so we do have um, quite a bit of assistance. And more importantly, we have the general system maintenance. Um, we make sure that our roadway is free flowing. When somebody gets on the road and they pay a toll, they expect the higher level of standard to maintain our roadway. So we basically make sure that guardrail is repaired on a timely basis, graffiti, our lighting, aesthetics, um, as well as our structures are up to, up to uh, safety standards. Our overall proposed expenditures for FY24 is $302 million. That's a decrease of $13 million, or 4.2%. Um, it should be noted that the components of the overall expenditures, you have your operating expense, your debt service, and the capital. Um, the operating side did go up, and I'll get to the next slide, but we, we had several contracts that we procured in FY22 um, that were old, older contracts, and now we have the current rates. Um, I also like to point out that as of the date of this report, um, through about April, we paid about $26 million for small business in FY23. Um, that number is going to be, by the time we close year end, north of $30 million. And when you subtract the debt service number at FY23, that's almost about 15% that we, you know, support small and local businesses. So I think that's, that's about 5% above what our target is. So the overall expenditures is $302 million. $63 million is for the operating expenses. We have a new line item this year, which is transit expenses of $2 million. And the $2 million is allocated to run a bus service from the Dolphin Ride Park and Ride to downtown. And we've been in negotiations to potentially piggyback on a contract um, as a pilot program. And that bus service would run from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then 2, a 2 p.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, in 15-minute intervals. So we slated about $2 million, but we have enough um, budgeted that we have to add additional services. We can do that. Um, we'll look at other additional services as far as how we can actually market that, that uh, uh, service to our public. So that's you know, critical that we're you know, being good partners to the county, providing additional mobility opportunities to our customers. Um, so, that, so we've slated a new item on, on the uh, transit expenditures. Um, we've also had our line item on contingencies of $2 million. Overall expenditures, you can see that operating expense is about 23% of the overall budget. We have debt service of 39%, and we have capital about 38%. Um, in FY23, as I indicated, that we incorporated in the operating budget, um, we have about 12 new maintenance contracts. We have two new generally consultant contracts, and we had some other professional service contracts that we procured. Um, and all of those contracts and those rates are reflected in this budget. Our capital expenditures is $117.4 million, and it's broken out into two components. You have your non-project capital, which are non-infrastructure or non-roadway capital, and then you have the five-year work program, um, FY24 to 28. Juan Toledo, who is our director of engineer, he's going to speak um, momentarily, and he'll talk about specific new projects that are incorporated. Um, but on the non-project capital, um, we have roof replacement. We have a couple of technology projects that we incorporated in the budget. And then on the five-year work program, we anticipate spending about $115 million. 330 is within the five-year window. And then the total project cost um, is $748 million. Our debt service, we have seven outstanding bond issuance from Series 2005 to Series 2006. Um, we anticipate uh, paying $117 million in principal and interest for next fiscal year. Um, this budget is compliant with our debt service obligation. Um, there is no new debt that's incorporated in here, nor is any refunding opportunities um, reflected in these numbers. Since we're approving a five-year work program, I thought it was appropriate to show a, a three-year view of the financial outlook of the organization. As you can see, um, year over year, our revenue will increase about $4 million each year. Our debt service does increase in FY25 and 26, and then it uh, slowly declines in 27, and our debt coverage is a 160 and above, which is compliant with the trust indenture and the board policy. This does not reflect any toll rate adjust, uh, uh, increases or CPI or no additional debt. But um, this also reflects that, you know, how we're going to be able to continue to pay for the capital program, which is going to be from the current year revenue stream. 
So overall, in the summary, again, your total revenue is $261 million, operating expenses, 63. We have a new line item of transit of 2 million, and then we had contingencies of 2 million. Um, then you have your total operating expenses, 67, net revenue is 194, and our debt service of 117. We get to a debt coverage of 165. And as you can see off there to the right, we have our red lane buses, uh, which hopefully they'll be operational in, during the summertime. So in summary, again, $203 million that you're gonna to approve today. Um, our reserves are fully funded up. Our operating expenses and debt service will be paid from the current revenue stream. And then your capital expenditures will be paid from a combination of the current year revenues as well as the general fund and the renewal and placement fund. Debt service coverage is 1.2 per the trust indenture, 1.5 for the board policy, and we're presenting you a budget today of a 165. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Juan to talk about specific projects. Good morning. So as Marie stated, the five-year uh, work program is 330 million. As always, our focus is always safety, system preservation, and mobility. This year, we're adding uh, uh, technology advancements on the system of roadway technologies. And you can see by the pie chart how we distribute the monies. Over 50% of, of our project or our budget is slated to be done to be spent physically in the field with design, build, and construction. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're, how, we're, how we uh, prepared this work program, which is the completion of ongoing projects. Uh, this year, the focus is on taking care of our system, making sure that our system is up uh, enhanced, that we're providing the safety and mobility uh, improvements to our commuters, and again, advancing technology and partnerships. So on the ongoing projects, we have the 836 I-95 interchange project. That's the uh, piece between the Marlin Stadium and uh, the MacArthur Causeway. Our portion is from I-95 to, to 17th Avenue, which includes the double deck portion and access improvements to and from I-95 north and south. We're also, we should be ramp, uh, fi uh, finishing up by spring of next year, the 836 ramp improvements or connections to the heft. This provides connectivity from the extension of 836 on the west side to the turnpike, which doesn't exist today. It also will provide direct access to and from the Dolphin Park and Ride, which will enhance the express bus service to the west as well as to the east. We're gonna be finishing our roundway safety initiatives. These, this, these are projects that have proven to be tremendously beneficial, alerting drivers when they enter the system erroneously, alerting them right away so that we can safely turn them around and get them back into the right direction. This has reduced traffic accidents on the system by a lot, and it's something that we feel very good about the way we've been implementing these projects. And then finally, on the ongoing, we have the, we just started the design on the widening of 137th Avenue between 8th Street and Coral Way. This is a partnership with the county. This is a commitment that uh, MDX has made to be able to improve this area, which also provides better flow to and from the extension at 37th Avenue and Northwest 12th Street. This will provide an additional lane in each direction along this corridor. It actually clears up a bottleneck that exists today because to the north and south of Coralway and 8th Street, you already have six lanes in each direction, uh, three lanes in each direction. This will provide continuity to uh, make sure that traffic is flowing a lot better in this area. For the upcoming projects, we have a design project that's coming out and then it'll be in construction in the later years, which is the 836 eastbound and west westbound winding uh, between 107th Avenue and 97th Avenue. Because of all the improvements that have been made along the turnpike, connecting to 107th Avenue, connecting to our system, there's some bottlenecks that have now been created and there's bottlenecks that we wanna make sure are not there when we bring the Kendall Parkway online in the future. So this will is a pre, uh, precursor to all these improvements that are going on now and that will be taking place in the future. But basically it'll provide auxiliary lanes and open up some of the, the merge lanes that exist there today so you can have better uh, flow through the system in this area. And then again, improving our system and enhancing our system. We're, we're looking to do uh, LED lighting on 878. That's gonna be going into design this fiscal year and then into construction. We're gonna be looking at uh, retrofitting our gantries on 836 and 112. 
uh, going to be looking at the design on the painting, how we're going to be able to paint all these structures. They're, they've already reached almost end of life. They're fading. But we want to make sure that we do this in a manner that it doesn't disrupt the collection of the revenue. So we're going to be looking at that. We're also going to be doing milling and resurfacing on the system, 878 and 138th Street Northwest primarily. But this is also going to cover other areas of needs along the system. Uh, we're also going to be looking at uh, providing alternative payment uh, methods on Stable 112 on the toll zones. Right now, we have a lot of loops that we're uh, main constantly maintaining, especially on 112. So we're going to be com converting the area underneath the gantries to concrete, which is going to be a lot better for maintenance. And, you know, and it's going to save us a lot of time when we have to go out there and do any type of maintenance to the toll system. We're also going to be adding uh, static lighting system-wide. We're already doing the one on 836-826, but this is to look at other areas on the system to enhance aesthetic lighting. We're going to be providing, uh, we're coming in with a project on Stable 112 for auxiliary lanes, and opening up lanes between 27th Avenue and 22nd Avenue to have better flow there. Right now you have a lot of merging that goes on in that area because you have a constricted area. And then again, improving the system with pavement uh, marking rehabilitation and sign panel replacements. We have a lot of signs on the system that are fading and we, 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 we want to bring them back up to uh, where they need to be. We're going to be doing a lot of planning in this work program, especially on Stable 112, which is our oldest system. As I mentioned, we are, we are designing ex uh, the auxiliary lane and that's moving forward, but we're also going to be looking at uh, starting the planning on the ramps at Northwest 37th Avenue. That'll, that'll be an on-ramp on going east, off-ramp getting off west. Uh, we're looking at uh, planning for the interchange at 874 and Sunset. This is a project that we had originally started looking at. We It, it kind of took a back seat, but we're bringing that back, start working with uh, the state on how we're going to provide access in that area. It's going to alleviate a lot of traffic on Sunset, especially in the area of 87th Avenue as traffic goes to uh, the Palmetto, but this is a much needed uh, ramp improvement to alleviate flow in the system. Again, on 112, we're going to be looking at operational improvements at Northwest 36th Street and at Okeechobee Road. Uh, the state is looking at a project in that area that they're improving the Iron Triangle, which is th that area. But we're looking at how we can also provide uh, congestion relief with direct access to and from these uh, two facilities. We have a project on 874 and 878 to better the merging in uh, between 874 and 878 where people wanting to get go south to 878 or 874. There's uh, some signing improvements that we can do there, some uh, modifications. And then there's also some operational safety improvements at 924 and 32nd Avenue. This is an area that when you're getting off the facility at, at uh, 924, we've, we've noticed some safety concerns that we want to be able to address. And then finally, in the permitting piece, as we move the, the parkway forward, we are finalizing the uh, Willing Setup program with, we have about 30 parcels remaining on that uh, activity. As I said, we, we're also moving technology projects uh, forward. And three of the main projects that we're looking at is the modernization of our toll system, um, working with uh, our consultants and internally with, uh, with Claudio and, and the IT team, We've identified uh, areas where we can modernize the system to improve uh, our collections and improve on, on some of the revenues to, to help us continue to advance other projects in the future. We're looking to implement new dynamic message signs on the system. There are some that have already reached in the life. They got the old pixelization, so we're going to be converting those, replacing those with the new full color matrix. We're also going to be adding uh, arterial DMS that um, off the system to alert commuters that are getting on the system what to expect as they enter our facilities. We're working with the county and the state on providing backup power to the traffic signals off our system. Uh, today when you have a natural disaster, an emergency and power goes out, these signals goes out and you have to send all your law enforcement resources to all these main areas because you need to direct traffic and you, may, you, want, you gotta make sure that traffic is flowing smooth on and off the system. By providing backup power and making sure that we have these signals up and running right after an emergency, you can, we can shift those resources to other areas in the county and make sure that traffic is flowing on our system on and off and making sure that we have emergency vehicles and commerce moving after any uh, natural disaster. 
And then finally, buses on the shoulder, we're gonna be providing uh, camera monitoring uh, for violations on the system to make sure that we're looking at the people that shouldn't be driving on the system and working with law enforcement to address that. But as a side note, these cameras are also gonna bring uh, AI technology that are gonna help us also monitor debris any situation, any hazards that are encountered. Now that we're going to be looking to taking on the express bus service, we wanna make sure that these uh, shoulders are free and clear so that we can maintain the headways that we're gonna be promising and that we can increase ridership on this service. And then we've added uh, transit improvements, which is basically something that we're gonna be continuing to work with the county on, identifying opportunities where we can be a more valuable partner to the county and pushing forward transit projects either through technology or through services, but we're allocating the monies in fiscal year 24 and 25 to make sure that we can make that happen. And with that, I open it up to any questions you might have. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, job well done. Um, on the 836 transit, the red line. I mean, what's what's an optimum um, uh, time between you know buses? We're, we're looking at 15 <clears throat> minutes. Is, is that optimum? And, and I'm saying that, Mr. Chairman, because uh, 8:36 is the main spine here in Miami-Dade County, mm -hmm. and I just believe that we have an opportunity uh, from a transit perspective. Uh, to really highlight that service and make that service very visible <coughs> and very important and, and vital to individuals who are basically trans transiting back and forth between downtown, you know, the airport and so on and so forth. And that we have a, an opportunity to really make that work and become a model, if you will, uh, for this community. And clearly, in my opinion, is going to take, you know, more of a commitment of resources to make that happen. But if you can imagine uh, riding uh, on 836, you and your car stuck in traffic, and you've got these buses that are kind of zipping by, taking people, you know, to their, you know, their, their stops, and you're stuck in traffic, uh, I, I think that that will have a, a very motivational effect. Uh, on individuals, you know, wanting to get out and, and basically utilizing that service. And that service then becomes a very high and visible service to this community and something that, you know, would basically help to elevate uh, MDX, if you will, to another level, you know, in this, this community because people will, would see those buses back and forth taking people and dropping people off. And we, we simply don't have that today, you know, anywhere. Uh, you know, we've got the busway, you know, we've got those kinds of things. And I don't see buses zipping down there, you know, every five minutes, you know, or so. Uh, and, and I just believe that this is a real opportunity for us, you know, and that we should go fully engaged on it. And it goes back to a part of the thing that I've, I've always talked about in terms of, we need to make sure that people know what MDX is doing out here in the community and what the benefits are, and that it's not just about tolls. And that's kind of the way people see us. If, if they even know who we are, what they know about us are tolls. You know, but again, that main spine in the middle of the county, 836, you know, being highlighted with buses coming back and forth, you know, taking people you know, back and forth to their particular, you know, uh, lo you know, locations, while others are stuck in traffic, I think would have a very profound effect, if you will, on, you know, uh, the community in reference to seeing MDX as a valuable and needed service in this community. And so I'd like for us to have a, a technical group, you know, get together with our consultants or whatever, and take a look at this and see how we can operate a premium service. We're talking about $2 million. Mm -hmm. Out of, you know, how, how, much, how much money do we bring in on an annual basis, tolls? Well, 237. 237. 237 million. 237. Okay, we, we're talking about committing $2 million to this endeavor 
<clears throat> along the, the main artery, the heart of Miami-Dade County. And I think that we can do better than that. You know, and I think that that would basically give us a high profile, but, but we're not doing it, you know, for it to be a, just, just to be a high profile event. We're providing a service, a service that is needed in this community. And, and so I'd like for us to, to really focus on this and make this a high priority uh, as it relates to um, contributing to not just the roads, but to, to the transit system, you know, here in Miami-Dade County. Mr. Mr. Vice Chairman, I, I would, <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. You know, many years ago, we started with a venture of trying to get this thing done. And we went from full trains to monorail, back to full trains, back to this line, back to the other line. And at the end of the day, finally, finally, we set up a station on the west side of Dade County and with that, we created, and we remember very clearly um, the work that we put in in our prior positions um, to make sure that this was a reality. And MDX stepped up and, and really, and I, I saw the prior uh, executive director back there that, uh, you know, and Al Alice, I thought she left. Where is she? Oh, there she is. And Alice, mm -hmm. that she, they could tell you the kind of effort that was done just to get these lines done. And of course, my two colleagues that are here that were there alongside that the vote, I think, was unanimous at the end of the day. And I would tell you that exactly what the vice chairman just said is 100% correct. The traffic has gotten worse because people are back to work. Mm -hmm. And every day, more and more people are finding out that it's not going to work from home anymore, and they're going back because it's being required of them to be in their job site. Some not. But what it does mean is that they're back to work and they need to go through traffic. So therefore, if the need of this and the executive director, with whatever way you want to put it together, as the vice chairman said, it is a must. Mm -hmm. And we have to enhance the service, get... I would tell you, Dolphin Mall, just to give you an example, has just revamped. Today, we'll be opening with Vivo, I think it is. Vivo is a new entertainment area that's huge. That's going to bring hundreds of thousands of people throughout the year to that area back and forth. People might want to get the bus and go back and forth, but work is important. And we need to provide this service and improve it the way it was intended to be done. So I congratulate the Executive Director and, and, and the team and making sure that we're going to be able to enhance this. But what I'm asking you beyond what the Vice Chairman has said is that I want to make sure that MDX is in full control of this moving forward because the need, we move a lot faster than any other entity. We're providing the service and we're doing what needs to be done for the citizens of this community. So when you do this, it's not just to see the benefit and put it out there and you're telling people and stuff, but making sure that our full control is in place to make sure that these buses, and, and by the way, Juan, finally, we're putting the cameras in to stop the, uh, the people that take a ride on there. And I know we have another side also representing here as part of a member that's been dealing with this for a long time. But that's the only way we're going we're gonna to stop things from happening. So, Executive if Director, I, you, thank you recognize. Thank you. So I do want to highlight, I think one of the most important things before I get to a little more detail on the service is that this is going to be a free service. Okay, it's not going to be charged to the residents of Dade County. And I think that's important to highlight. Um, and this is Can you say that again, please, is, slowly? <laughs> so, free. F-R-E-E. -E, free. <laughs> so, I, I do want to say that that's something that we wanted to make sure 
that we are obviously doing things that for the betterment, of course, of our residents of Dade County. On top of that, we've had a lot of conversations with the Department of Transportation and Public Works. And what you've seen now is that the service they provide that they could provide is only one bus every 30 minutes. Ideally, what they would like to operate, it's every 15 minutes, like the vice chairman mentioned, between 6 to 9 a.m. And I think, I believe it's 4 to 7 p.m. Everybody knows, like we just mentioned, yes, traffic has gotten worse in Dade County, but it's not only, it hasn't just gotten worse, it's that our peak hours have changed significantly. There is no more 6 to 9 a.m. peak hours. You get on the 836 at 10 a.m., and it is bumper to bumper. And I believe the county, what, they're, what they were able to provide at the moment, I think was once every hour after 9 a.m. So just imagine, um, I invite anybody to come leave MDX at 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. And it's, it's as if it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so we are in, a, there has been a shift. And I think also because of COVID and because of the pandemic, not only people returning to work, but because people are either coming in later in the day to work to skip some of this traffic. That's why you see these peaks extending way past what they were. So not only are we going to be able to do the standard scheduled service for every 15 minutes, we're going to be expanding on the peak hours. We've talked about that, aside from what the county does today, and also probably providing an on-demand service as well as a hybrid for those that, of course, that's why we've seen Uber is very successful, right? Because sometimes people don't want something scheduled. I have to be there at a time certain. You're running around. Sometimes you're stuck maybe dropping off children to school or you have somebody senior lives in your home. You have to get to a doctor appointment, whatever it may be. We wanted to be able to provide even more service for those in the middle of the day, right? That, that way they don't have to use their vehicle and they can just get a service on demand as well. So that doesn't mean we're going to stop there. And as the vice chairman said, I think there is even more we can do, which is why we also slated more, I'm, I'm sorry, more money aside from the two million for ways we can improve the system, whether it's partnerships with the county or, or any municipality of how we can do this as a joint venture. I think one of the things I want to highlight when I started here a year and two months ago at the agency, I made it very clear that this is something that we really had to push forward. How are we building the foundation 50 years from now? One thing MDX does very, very well is build construction projects, right? Up, you know, that's something that we do with no problem. But then it's what are we doing to really set that foundation for where we are going? Because there is going to be, like I tell everybody, 10 years from now, we're not going to be 3 million residents. It's going to be 4.5 million is what we're looking at. And what are we going to be doing? We're going to be catching up on how we're gonna be building our infrastructure, but we have to provide other options because there's only so far we can go in such an urban Dade County. I mean, like we said, we have 3 million residents in a very, very small space. So I just wanna you know, thank the board for believing in this and, and really pushing forward the envelope for us to make real solutions that really help all modes of transportation. Thank, thank you, you. Executive Director, Member Monestein. Well, I this is this is um, another great idea by the vice chair um, that um, this service, this particular service, uh, need to be rebranded. But as we do so, I'm concerned of uh, I'm concerned with um, two uh, particular um, aspect of how this is done right now. I'll, I'll start with the last one. The last one just came up as the director was. Um, was speaking, um, I wonder whether this should be maybe a discounted service versus instead of a free service, um, because you know just just because uh, as as a small business person, I'm always concerned about what's free and what could be discounted, so that people continue to invest in the things that they appreciate. Um, um, second, uh, it can be very, very discounted. It may be a route that costs, you know, six, seven dollars that is given at a dollar fifty. But, but I, I, I like when people, uh, you know, invest in in in, in, in what they're on. Um, the other thing is 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 an image issue. Uh, the, the 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 route is called the the red lane right now, right? Uh, uh, the red line. Uh, I, I'm, I'm concerned about starting with a red line. 
it, it can become the red carpet in the future, <laughs> but I'd like to begin with a green line, <laughs> okay? Yeah, no, I must put my red line, man. <laughs> you know, uh, because, the, you know, everything red is, is kind of like, you know, questionable and people may, but, sure. but if it evolves to become red in the future, people appreciate that part perhaps a whole lot more. Um, and, and again, that comes to mind, especially that as I, I drive around a lot and I don't see much traffic on it. And I'm, I'm, I always wonder whether people think that this is a red light they shouldn't get on it. Because not everybody reads, you know, even though it says red line, it says express lane, it says whatever. But not, not everybody reads that. OK, um, so so I, I think as we rebrand, I, I would want to. Uh, uh, staff to question uh, these kind of things with your consultant um, uh, because uh, sometimes I'm looking at these from a writer perspective as well. <laughs> I, 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 uh, my last couple of years on the board, I started taking the Express uh, Service uh, 595 from the Golden Gate to downtown because it was much faster. Okay, it was much faster. I had not done that in 20 some years, and I live 15 minutes away. In, you know, from downtown. Uh, and and I, I had the time to read, to research, to speak on the phone, to do so many things that I'm not able to do uh, when I'm driving. So, and, and it, was, it was a value added uh, service uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I would get to my meetings downtown on time. I, I think, you know, being the spine that the vice chair speaks about uh, that uh, at 36 is the frequency. From, huh? The frequency you're saying. Yeah, not just the frequency, but but providing people the ability to do many things that they cannot do what sitting in traffic uh, is, is is a value uh, that uh, uh, many people who, who likes driving, like myself, would appreciate. Because though I like to drive, I like to, you know, have control of, of that wheel. But at the end of the day, we all have 24 hours. And if you have that time that you can catch up with some stuff, at times we would use that. But... Look into these things, especially the 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 the, the red line uh, and 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 the free stuff, you know, and to see if we, you know, if if we can do a little better. Thank you. Any other member? Member Weinberg. Thank you, Board Member Monestine. Uh, I've shared with Darlene that uh, um, we should really start looking into the express express yourself. Uh, campaign and have folks really buy into uh, transit as a way to express your frustration, express your admiration, express express yourself. Uh, we used it in Aventura when we first launched our, our free community shuttle service, uh, but I will tend to agree with you, uh, Board Member Monestine, that uh, sometimes you do have to have a bit of a charge just so people feel invested in it. And yes, anytime there's a red line item, especially on budgets, we all know it's it's a bad association. So we can certainly work on on the on the optics of it. But I I, I did want to sort of just uh, finalize on the two incredible presentations of this budget and this work program, and hone in on the fact two things that really stick out of me out of our incredible budget. Yet again, reminding you, this is my tenth year on this board. And and I'm never not impressed. And I came from a municipality who is the envy of this county. And we love setting the example. And I love how so many of the Dade County municipalities have really just flourished over the years. Sweetwater, it's also on its way up. Um, talk about partnerships. Budget, budget, budget. It's everything. How do you get and how do you give in your community? And here at MDX, we've done it time and again every year. Very responsibly on the Topic of bondholders, speaking of, $1.4 billion at our debt coverage ratio is to be envied, I believe. So that's one thing that I take out of our budget, how responsible we continue to be. And secondly, how the expenditure side on the operating side, the bulk of that is going to maintenance, maintenance, maintenance of our roadway system. So yeah, back to, it's not just construction, you have to also maintain your roadways. And I also told uh, our, our current executive director and uh, Javier Rodriguez is in the audience. I used to tell him all the time. I used to challenge our folks to write the difference at MDX because you really can tell when you're on an MDX road 
That's true. Except sometimes on the 112, I feel there there's not a whole lot of love. <laughs> Being the only North person, I'm Northern then, so I'm gonna say I'm the only North person, way North person on this board. I don't frequent our roadways too often, except since I travel so darn much. 112 is my baby. So I love that in this budget this year, in this work program, we have so many improvements coming into 112. Um, so now we're going to be infallible, uh, uh, clearly, between all the safety improvements, all the uh, electronic enhancements, and the lighting enhancements, Vice Chair, you should be very happy. I think we're really, really just, I forget setting the example. We're setting the bar so high. My board member here, stop talking. He was talking to me earlier, too, and he gave me a great analogy. I love analogies. I raise my children on analogies, and I train my clients on analogies. And he said, when Gene Stearns began to speak, he said, it's like we're being punished for being the good student. I said, yes, what is happening to MDX right now, imagine yourself coming home and beating your A-plus student child <laughs> to a pulp because he's being so darn good. And you know why? Because he's making your other kids look bad. And that is where we're at today. We're getting beat down by the state because we're making everybody else look bad. But this budget and this work program and these members on this board, and even back when we were 13 members on this board, have done nothing but good and have done it for the community to say nothing of the fact that there's 33 plus and growing staff members now that are also coming into this building every day to do nothing but good. So we'll continue the fight because if anybody has a right to exist, it's people that are doing good work and we certainly are. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got to circle back around again and I'm, I'm going to the whole issue of every 15 minutes, is is that the optimum? Is that the best? Is that the best that we can do? Right. And so, you know, th that's the question that I think uh, some kind of a, a task force needs to be put together, and we need to sit down and start working on those things right away. Because again, this is, and, and I guess the question is, we've got a, a good working relationship with the county as it relates to this particular issue. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. I don't, want, I don't want any problems. Yes, that's correct. Well, you know, folks coming up and saying that, you know, the contract and blah, 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 you know, that sort of a thing in the future. But again, we have a chance to be a model, not just for Miami-Dade County, you know, but for running one of the best red line systems, whatever it's basically called, you know, uh, in the country. You know, and, you know, because we don't have a number of roadways that we are looking at transit issues, this is our baby. You know, this is our opportunity. So I don't want us to get caught up in what I call the, the, the regular government issue. This is the way we do it because this is how government does it. I want us to be innovative, be different. Speak to, and, and, I'm, and I think that it's going to deal with some of those, speak to the issue of being able to ride and read and have Wi-Fi access and all these other kinds of things as you're, you know, commuting back and forth. Uh, and I think that those things are going to be included based upon the review that, you know, that, that I had, the budget review. But I don't want us to be caught up in doing things the way government normally does things. You know, and if 15 minutes is not optimum, we need to get to whatever that number is, you know, if that's optimum, you know, to operate on this system so that we operate. And, and I don't have a problem with free uh, commission because you, 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 you want to you build, you want to build ridership, you know, and, and if someone can have the incentive that it's not going to cost me anything, I just got to get, you know, to that particular the, the parking ride. And I can catch a, a bus every five minutes, every 10 minutes during peak hours or whatever that number basically is. You know, it, it is an incentive for me to, to, to get on, you know, uh, on that particular system. Again, and I'm going to say this again, I don't want us to be the regular government issue. You know, because government does it that way, we're going to do it that way. Let's do what is going to be the most optimum and best 
you know, situation for our, our riders, our commuters. Within and being fiscally responsible, I'm not saying that we become, you know, irresponsible, but we can do better. We have a chance to really make a difference and to also show to the county that MDX is not just in the business of, of building roads. Because I'm going to tell you, and, and that's one issue, and I'm glad that we're starting to have more conversations with the county, you know, at this particular point in time in terms of being in a position perhaps to help support some of their, their transit initiatives going forward. Because some folks in the county had a problem with MDX, you know, as it relates to that. So I think that we, we have to be more flexible and we have to have some of those conversations. But we can't build roads forever in this community. We're in a confined space. And so we've got to be involved, you know, in the, the transit game, if you will. And 836 gives us the perfect opportunity to highlight what we do here at MDX. Because like I say, when people think of MDX, if they, if they even know what MDX is, what they think about it is tolls. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we need, to, we need to change that image and provide the, a service to this community that this community will benefit from. So, so don't get caught up in this, <clears throat> well, 15 minutes. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in that. Let's, let's talk about what is most optimum and best for this community. Mr. Vice Chairman, you know how special the red lines uh, are to me? Uh, uh, <clears throat> the, you know, this is something that, let, let, let me put it this way, for those of you who don't know, I, I, for 18 years, for 18 years, and, and both Javier and will tell you, and Alice will tell you that we went through a lot to get to this point. But this point is always meant to be taken to a better level. It's always meant to do exactly what you're saying, Mr. Vice Chairman, because that is what we envisioned back then. They didn't want us to do, some people did not want us to have these buses going back and forth and commute the way they do, and to be able to expand the west and east back and forth the way it needs to as the main um, main spinal cord or whatever you want to call it. But the adjustment and looking and moving forward is ultimate. We had COVID. We had a situation nobody was expecting in the world, and it happened. It changed the plans. It did a lot of things that changed our way of life. But we need to analyze pre-COVID, during COVID, now, and I think that's what staff and the executive director are looking at at this time. They're analyzing what works, how we could improve, how we could do what timing. Obviously, what she's saying that at 6 o'clock in the morning, now you're having more traffic than sometimes at 9 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, at 7 o'clock, 7.30 actually, the other day, the traffic was backed up before the airport, heading west. So I thought automatically there was an accident. Guess what? There wasn't. It is now becoming really, but one thing that is apparent and precise is that traffic has grown tremendously, whether it's the 836 or any place else. But we need to analyze exactly that, which I know you guys are doing. But throughout the years, we knew that this was going to become incredibly important for Dade County. And, and, and I'll tell you, I do take it personal because it's something that I fought for a long time to happen because I knew it was going to work out and do great. Now with this board and this entity that's done only great things that I could see of, okay, we're going to take it to a different level. And I do appreciate those comments and so on. So. The direction to us, I think to you, is, you know, I guess why you study out what you're going to do and I think getting closer to the budget and everything else is to come back with a good analysis, whether it's free or maybe not. Maybe having a small amount to people buy in, like Commissioner Montesine and Weinberg said, it, it might be important to do so. I would like to hear. Now, the red line to topic of that. The reason we had the red line is because it's also an emergency lane 
for fire and police. And it is meant for people not to get on and drive on it and for the buses to have complete clear passage. And in, in turn, we've had accidents in, that have occurred and they moved the parts that are left onto the red lane. And I gotta thank staff and everybody that's worked on this. I used to drive every day, the 836, and I've been driving it lately. And I would tell you that is the cleanest I've ever seen those red lanes. So I could congratulate you all because when we started here, that was our biggest problem. So thank you for that and thank you for what you're doing. Madam Executive Director, I think we could wind can it up. Can I give you a challenge, this. Charlene? Sure. So Monesting and I want to be able to go to the Golden Glades Interchange in our neck of the wood in the north, hop on that express bus, and then somewhere grab the MDX Express and get way down, way down south to visit. To the new entertainment chair. area. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're well, it's on. <laughs> that is what we want. <laughs> yeah, Pepe country. That's good. <laughs> that was good. Go ahead. <laughs> That's actually a great challenge. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I agree. And I, and I, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> I think probably creating a task force, we can have a discussion, and that's something I will discuss with our staff on what we can do prior to us maybe doing an RFP, if that's what the route we're going to go, mm -hmm. um, to invite people to come and provide what they think is best, right, for our service. But I do want to uh, mention and remind everyone that, of course, we added even more money on the budget under transit planning. So what we may think is good in our mind, we can continue in optimizing that service. And that is why we put that money aside just for that, because it may not, you know, let's say we're at a budget of one and we have two. We also have room to continue expanding that service as we see fit. Maybe we add stops. Maybe we talk about an express service further up north. And I think we're going to be able to grow and enhance this as we go and maybe have that flexibility under if we were to advertise this um, or if we were to piggyback on a contract, which I know that's something we will probably bring to our board to discuss at a later date. But that's something that I think getting the task force together is important, getting your thoughts and ideas. Obviously, I know we've talked to the county, and of course the county has a service they would like to have, which is the one I just said, which was a 15 minute, which, which they don't have today. They don't have not even that service today. They don't have the ability to do that today. Um, and I think today they have 84 riders a day, if I'm not mistaken, or three, I'm sorry, that was during peak, I guess. So 300 all day. And we want to make that in the thousands. I mean, and I think as a service continues being optimized and more and more riders, these smaller type passenger um, fleets, right? They're not as large as the counties. Then I think we're going to be able to provide even more and more service, but we're going to be able to optimize it as we go. So even though we may start with one type of service that we may all agree to, as we continue mo moving forward, we will have the ability to continue and saying, now this is working, let's go to the next step. And let's start adding routes or let's start adding um, different locations where we can access this express yourself bus service um, in our system. So that is why I thought it was important not just to stop what we have slated, which is the two million, but we made sure the budget had enough money to cover for optimizing any service we may deem necessary as we as we go through this process. Love it. Member Cueto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to echo the Vice Chairman's uh, sentiment and share that the county staff has been working very closely with the MDX staff to develop this service plan. And exactly as has been said by the, my colleagues, uh, a presentation, maybe executive director, on the service plan, the type of service, what those options are, uh, how it can become visible for, for the community, the community outreach program that would, that would uh, ensue uh, would be of tremendous benefit. Also, uh, to add context, I think most folks uh, here know there's a transit-oriented development underway at the Dolphin Station. And that is going to change the, the dynamic entirely around service, service planning, and what's needed to, to support those residents in the future. And so it's an ever-evolving uh, uh, venture uh, for MDX to transition to providing these type of transit services, which, as, as all of my colleagues have said, is central and core to our uh, business and to the needs of our, of our residents and our customers. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Chair. Thank you, Member Cuarto. And thank you for reminding me, 1,800 units are going to sit 
right next to, it's a TOD. Uh, it is in the city of Sweetwater. And it's something that part of the vision that we had to put this TODs, I think we used to call it the uh, Daytron or the West, <laughs> you know. Um, but basically, that's that's what this is all about. So Spreading we'll continue. Man, yes, <laughs> spreading and and down north, down south, you know, and making sure that people could get on and ride and they could do the work and everything else that we discussed. So with that, I think uh, we already voted on this item and we're good. Let's go to the. Uh, are we good, everybody? I thought I took a vote. You had a second. And a motion. Not to the best of my knowledge. You had a motion. I thought and a I did. But I had a motion and I had a second, and I thought I called the vote, but I didn't. Okay. All in favor say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? None. Okay, we did it. All right. Making sure we check off the box. We're good. Keep You're going. Good. You're good. You're good. I'm go. with you 100%. There you go. Regular agenda item A approval of tech recommendation and contract award for MDX contract number RFP 23 03. Traffic and revenue consultant services, 2500000 Do I have a motion? I have a second. Uh, first or second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? None. Next item. Item B, approval of contract award ITB 23-09, system emergency debris removal. Do I have a motion? A motion. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Next item. Um, the consent agenda. Travel approval for board member and executive director for the 2023 FBT Team Florida Transportation Summer Camp on July 19th through the 21st in St. Pete Beach, Florida. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. Next item. That's the uh, approval I summary think, minutes. Yes. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor say aye. Anybody opposed? None. Uh, information, the procurement uh, reports, treasury report, I think. I think it was covered. inclusive before. Yeah. It was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I gotta the try graphics, I, gotta try I don't know too. how you do that, but that was incredible. <laughs> I'm gonna try, yeah, I'm going to join that. Go ahead. And next is the executive director's report. Madam executive director, before you give your report, I want to recognize you on winning... Uh, recognition award recipients. Is there anything out there that you're not winning? <laughs> Congratulations once again. It's a great group, WTS, South Florida Foundation. Thank you. And uh, I, I guess, uh, great job. Keep going. Thank you. Thank Making you. Making us really, proud. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you. And of course, thank you to our women in transportation of South Florida for recognizing me, which will be, I believe it's next Wednesday in Aventura. Um, at 6 p.m. So I th I know that Maria Luisa will probably send something out if anybody wants to attend. I know um, we've attended this in the past. Of course, we're members of Women in Transportation, and it's a good, good organization, and um, very happy that to be there. So my executive report is short and sweet, and this is actually, I have only one thing to really report that I want to highlight. Um, and that's just yesterday, I want to say probably around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we received a phone call that we have been awarded the Expressway Authority of the Year. Yeah. By <laughs> Yes, so, and that is by, and that is for the State Road 874 ramp connector to Southwest 128th Street. So that is a project that's being highlighted. <laughs> that's and this was, ramp. <laughs> yes, and, and just so you know, it's obviously the Florida Transportation Builders Association that does these awards. And I know we had put it in for last year. We did it again this year. And we got, we, I just got word last night. So I'm very, very proud of the work of our yeah. staff and, of course, board members that were involved. I know a lot of you here, even prior to my time at MDX, and I know Javier's in the crowd um, there was a lot of work that entailed getting this project done and making it a reality. So, and I have to sell, tell you, not as an executive director, but as a Miami-Dade County resident really that lives in the area, I thank every single one of you and, of course, our contractors and our staff that made this project happen. So I'm happy we're being recognized for this. I know this was a huge, huge project for this county. And, of course, there's many more to come in the future. But um, this award will be given, I believe, August 4th 
uh, in a breakfast award ceremony, which will be held at Boca Raton Resort and Beach Club. And as we get more information, of course, we'll be sharing that with everyone if you all want to attend. <coughs> so that is it. That is the end of my report. Wow, so. that was a good report. Yeah. I, love, really? I saved Seriously? the best for last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice to get those kind of reports. That Go ahead. Fantastic. Well, we're just down to the announcements, but if you may, I have Go ahead. A point. Yeah, I just wanted to inform the board that the lawsuit has been filed. It's already filed. Right on time. You want it done fast. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here. <laughs> I want to make sure things get done. Mr. Vice Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I know we want to get out of here, but you know I'm always looking at some stuff. Oh uh, boy! I, I right, like guys. to, <laughs> I like to, um, Mr. Chairman. You know, with the support of the board, have an update on the I-95 bridge project. You know, because we see it happening in, uh, you know, I like for us to be able to, the, you know, I don't need it now, but you know, to, to fully understand what it is, you know, that that we're basically doing there. I want to ask about. Uh, the lighted markers, I think at one time mm -hmm. uh, we had done an experimental thing where we had some lighted markers that were on the road. And so at night mm -hmm. they would light up. And I remember when I first saw them, you know, I said, man, what is that? You know, so, you know, I don't know, you know, if um, that didn't work out. You know, what, you know, I like to have a report back, you know, on that. And that was especially good, you know, at night when, you know, or when you had rain and stuff like that. And uh, I'd like to also ask that we get a report on the maintenance on the exit and on-ramp areas underneath in terms of how that's basically going, you know, in the future. And so you mean that, the little turnabouts? Yeah, and when people are coming off, you know, because, you know, what we said was, is, you know, it's, it's wonderful and great Correct. to make sure that, yeah. you know, the main lines are, are, are clean and, and, and maintained, but when people come off, they don't know whose responsibility it is. And it, you know, if it's a mess, it's MDX's mess. You know that type of thing. Yeah, and and that to that point, um, everybody thinks now that all the expressways are basically MDX, yeah. and, and 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 that's a very very good point. That uh, make sure that on that report that uh, you come back with the lighting issue a little stronger as to the decorative and everything else. I know it's already been presented, but let's let's take another look and see what we could do that's outside the box. And I think that's what we're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. and what's been done before and how has it been, in, you know, what's worked, what hasn't, but maybe thinking outside the box. Once again, I've traveled around the world representing Miami-Dade County and I saw things in other countries that were very impressive. And they actually use safety, but the lighting at the same time for improvement and beauty of uh, the particular area. So that's just something that I keep harping on because I think it's important that we continue to look at that. I think we're on the same page, all mm -hmm. of us on that. All right, so with that, we're the, good. The announcement. Board meeting July 25th, 2023, 4 p.m. William Lehman Building, MDX Building Boardroom. Then I'm going to get you some kind of a tune in, like a trumpet thing. <laughs> yeah. Before, before you do the announcement. And get, you know, and just move well, I, forward. I could probably like, hear ye, hear ye. There you to go. Get the right. announcement next time. but It all works, man. It all yeah, works. Yeah, I'll get a bell, too. So with that, <laughs> Mr. Vice Chairman. Moving. All right. We're adjourned. Thank all you. All right. Good job.